Welcome everybody to another edition of Dan's Grand Valley Layout. This will be update number 22. And uh, this week what we're going to do is talk about uh, making the winter scene uh, module that's going to go inside the mountain uh, to replace the graveyard module that I made for Halloween. So this is the weekend of November 15th. 14 15 so we have about a month and a week till christmas so uh, just getting started early and uh, gonna go over some of the materials that i've picked up to make the winter scene module and then we're also uh, as a added bonus we're gonna make some cast rocks and go ahead and color them so i'll show you a segment on how i do that uh, we're gonna use those for the uh, winter scene and uh, that's about it this week. It's amazing how quick uh, you fill up about 30 minutes uh, making these videos. So this will be part one of the winter module, winter scene module. And uh, not too much else going on on the layout. Uh, I did order a traffic light controller because what I'm gonna have here on this, this corner I'm gonna have a traffic signal here for these people. There'll be a limit line here and traffic signal. Traffic signal here, and then one over here. And I'm gonna have these two be, you know, red, yellow, green on the same sequence. And then this one will be red, yellow, green on its own sequence. And uh, I had bought these little uh, traffic signals. Let's go over to the bench and I'll show you what I've got over there. All right, over here on the bench. Um, so I picked these up uh, about a year ago, actually. They're three color, red, yellow, green. And uh, I've got three of them. They're perfect to go on the corner there, like I just showed you. Came with this little controller. Of course, no instructions at all. So I was experimenting around. I've got bench power over here, 12 volts. Uh, the LEDs work fine on 12 volts no instructions, and I tried, uh, just to be safe, I tried six volts with a battery pack, nothing happened, uh, went ahead and hooked this up to 12 volts, fried it, so it doesn't work. So these work great, and I've got another little controller that I actually bought off of Amazon coming, and I'm not sure what this was intended to do, I don't know if it was gonna control them randomly, or, you know, it doesn't seem to be programmable. There was no switches or anything like that. So, uh, no instructions at all. And I just took my chances and ended up frying it. So, that's gone. But these work. So, the new controller I have coming, uh, that'll be, hopefully, I'll, I'll get it hooked up on the bench. We'll test it out and make sure it works good. And then we'll get them installed. But, uh, this week, we're going to be working on making the module. So let's get to that. All right, we're over here on the bench, and I've got the graveyard module out. And uh, like I explained last video, I'm going to be making a winter scene module to go in the space in the layout to utilize this space. So it's going to fit in here just like the graveyard did. I'm also going to utilize this space here, and I'm gonna do something with this to maybe make it a mountainside that's snow covered or some rocks or something. So that'll come down and be a little more natural. And again, uh, we're gonna do something with the tunnels so that when you clear this part coming in here and same over here, that you're actually, it appears like you're coming to the back side of the mountain, uh, and this will be all open, uh, open space in here, outdoor. So uh, I'll show you how I'm gonna accomplish that, but I wanted to show you this space in here. We're also gonna be utilizing this along here, if I can get in here uh, to do any work, and how we're gonna uh, make this appear to be blue sky. And same with this wall here, this back wall. So back over to the bench, we're gonna go over 
the materials that I've picked up over the last week to make this possible. So uh, I got some tag board, which is foam board at the dollar store. And they have like a plastic or paper coating on it. They're about a little less than a quarter inch thick, but they're very rigid. So that's going to be the base of our module. If I have to, I can double it up. You can see I bought two. Then uh, over at Hobby Lobby, I found this roll. They call it poster paper. Yeah, let's see. Bulletin board paper, I'm sorry. And this happens to have a blue sky with clouds uh, pattern on it, on it. And this is four feet by 12 feet. So it's a very long roll. <laughs> so I will have plenty. And that's going to be cut and put on those back walls over here. Along there on the inside of the big door. And then, of course, along this wall here so that it appears like, let me go over here, like that's all sky when you come off the, come through the tunnel and you'll see all that. It'll look like it's just an infinite valley uh, with some mountains and stuff like that. So I'll have my mountain in here. And uh, so then back over to the bench. Here's this. We're going to use this as the pattern to cut out the module for the winter scene. So I've got some stuff together that are going to be used for the winter scene. So let's go over that. Okay, I've mentioned in previous videos the neoprene rock molds. And this one came with the kit. This one I bought. This is more like surface rock. So I'm going to be using the... Let me get it out here. The lightweight hydrocol plaster that came with the kit. And I'll be mixing that up and making some more rock. That'll be used for the scene. So I've got these out. And I purchased some flex paste from Woodland Scenics, which is a white paste that will stay white. It has paint in it. And that's used to, uh, after you uh, paint your earth undercoat, you use the flex paste to create drifts and other things like that. So we'll be using the earth undercoat, then we'll be covering it with flex paste, then we'll be using our Woodland Scenics snow, soft flake snow. Of course, we'll be using the scenic cement to put that down just like we do any of the foliage or green grass. Uh, I've, I've dug out the tunnel portal pattern from the kit. Uh, this is something you cut out of the instructions when you're building the kit. It tells you, gives you the pattern to cut out your foam uh, tunnel portal. And I'm going to be using that to make some more tunnel portals for inside the tunnel. Uh, like I said, I want it to appear like you're coming through the tunnel and then into an open area. Uh, you can see I went ahead and bought the Woodland Scenics Ice Skaters and Snowball Fight. And I'm going to have a probably a small river or a stream running through with a little pond. And I'll have some uh, ice skaters there. Kind of like I did a road here on the graveyard. It's going to be... Something like that, a little stream, a pond, stream running through. Kids can be on each side of the stream throwing snowballs. And then I envision in this corner of the uh, module will be a small hill. And they do have some sledders available. Um, they were just out of stock and I couldn't get them this time. So I have some kids on sleds for that. Uh, I also picked up from Hobby Lobby, I got some evergreens with some snow on them and I also got these from Hobby Town same thing these are the same kind of trees that I use only these have snow on them snow dusted 
I may add a little bit more if I want some more snow on there. Also from the dollar store, I found these little guys. And this is pretty good. You get eight of them for a dollar and that's at Dollar Tree. And they're pretty small. Now they have little wooden bases, but they can be cut off. And then I can have these sort of in the background. Or I thought even throughout town, they can be uh, kind of like Christmas trees. Uh, if you see the size of the people with them, that would be like a large Christmas tree. These, um, there's a, an adult man there. So yeah, it'd be like a Christmas tree size. Let's see. Also picked up some more scenic cement because I'm going to need that for putting down the snow. And I got another tunnel portal. It's a cut stone one. It's the same as what I've got on the kit. Um, I bought another one uh, sort of for a pattern, but also if I want to utilize it for uh, inside there. I'm not sure if I'll just use foam and use the pattern uh, to make foam ones, but got that if I need it. So that's kind of where I am. I'm going to start and I'll document as I go. I won't document everything, but I will document as I go and give you my progress and show you where I'm at. Uh, busy at work this kind of time of year. It's our uh, very busy time, so uh, I may not get uh, something done every weekend, but I'm going to try. And I'm hoping by Christmas that uh, we'll have a nice cab ride video for Christmas Eve. All right, I've mixed up some hydrocol plaster for the rock mold and uh, just kind of mixed it to the consistency of uh, some toothpaste, really. Um, so that'll pour out of here. So let's go ahead and pour it in our rock mold. We'll just kind of do each rock, each stone by itself. I may not have enough for all of the stones in this pattern here. Now you notice I miss, I skipped the one there and that's because I did not want them to join together above the mold. And this looks like, well this looks like a good one here. Let's do this one. We'll do this one. Looks like I'm running out here. That'll probably be about it. That one might be enough in there for that one. See now I kind of touch those two together. It's like making pancakes. You touch them together, now they're gonna be joined, but that's no big deal. It's really lightweight, so it's not that big a deal. Um, then what you wanna do is go ahead and tap this. See those two join together there. Kind of want to tap this and that'll get the air bubbles out. They'll come to the top. Because you don't want air bubbles in your rocks. And they're kind of joining together. But when you break this apart, like I said, they'll all separate. So this is kind of good. Make a little mess over here. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna put the camera down and see if I can scrape out a little bit more plaster and get some of these other rocks filled up. So let me put you down and uh, get right back to you. All right, I went ahead and mixed up a little bit more and uh, just went ahead and filled in the rest of the rocks here. These are already starting to set up a little bit can kind of see some of the air bubbles coming to the surface on this so we'll just tap that like that there's some 
air bubbles coming up there. That's the last one I just filled. And I made enough to fill this bigger one too. I don't know what we're going to need. We're just playing this by ear. So let's go ahead and since we have it, and it's been a while since I made rocks, it's really fun actually. And it's really fun to use the earth colors, uh, pigments and stuff and color them. They really come out neat when you, when you do that. So, um, I'm going to fill this one a little bit short. You can make it one big one, as you can see, uh, with a crease down the middle, but I'm going to make it into two smaller ones. So this one we won't fill quite as much. We'll make them two separate ones. All right, you do the same thing here. Just tap it down. Then I'm going to take them over, put them over by the wind, window on the uh, ledge and let them set for 24 hours. All right, I cut some of the stone sheet that I've shown you before and glued there. That's going to stay black back there. And I took some of the stone sheets sort of made that turn there. Then I'm gonna fill this void with some rocks, some talus, stone uh, talus, in here too, just a light layer to look like rocks are there. Then I made this out of eighth inch foam. I just took the rest of the stone sheet, I put it on both sides and I cut it to fit in here like that so now I'm gonna paint this little edge right here of this bridge here I'm gonna paint that I painted the uh, edges a uh, concrete color and I'm just gonna go get a train and make sure everything clears which it should because this is actually uh, the this is hanging below what I made so as long as it can clear the curve, which it should be fine, then I'm gonna get some hot glue and glue that in. I'll put the rocks in there before I do that. And then I'll have what, you know, looks like you at least come out of a tunnel into this open space here. All right, so I finished that. I've got the tunnel portal in. Over there and pretty happy with it it's not the greatest thing in the world but it does convey that you've come through a tunnel and you're into this open space here so we'll go with it for now I can always add some details around it some foliage some rocks um, I did actually put some rock down at the base there I don't know what I'm going to do over here. Everything is really tight for me to be able to get into. I can probably try to do something there, but we'll see. Uh, now we're going to start on the module for the winter scene. And uh, we'll, we'll get the, the styrofoam board cut and go from there. Okay, it looks like our rock molds are done. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get them out of here out of the molds so you just kind of gently release them all right so I just kind of gently you know pushed them from the back side and got them out and this is how they come out so they've got you know a little bit of extra stuff around so you just sort of break that off and just sort of with your fingers, just kind of trim that off and anything that's not right. And then even if you uh, you don't like the size of the stone, you can break it in half. You can do a lot of different things with them. Um, so it's really kind of fun. So I'm just gonna go around and, and clean up all the extra stuff and just have some pure rocks here. See these, 
that was the uh, part of why I didn't want to have them connected uh, when I poured them. But it's real easy to break them apart and then just clean off the excess. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'll show you what I've got. And then uh, we'll do a segment where we color them. Okay, so just using my finger, I just scraped off, rubbed off any of the edges and anything that was extra on there. And I just kind of cleaned them up. And you can't go wrong with rocks. I mean, you can't do a bad thing. If you break one, you just sort of smooth it out. It looks like a rock that broke. So uh, you really can't go wrong. But um, so you can see how many rocks this yielded me. Um, and it's actually pretty cool. This one has a crack in it there. I mean, that is really cool. And you'll see when it when we start doing the the washes and the colors, how uh, we're gonna do the leopard spot technique. And uh, it, it's just really cool how they take the color and just come to life. So we'll do that, but let's go over to the uh, layout here and I'll show you some of the places I used the rocks. Here's one here. So very much, I think it's one of the same. Yep, it's one of the same that we just made. Um, I glued extra little rocks in here. Uh, you know, once you do your landscaping around it, you add some foliage and some brush and stuff. It really looks cool. Um, that's a place where I did it. Um, there's one that I did there. And I put a couple of rocks right there. I thought that looked kind of cool. There's one, uh, you know, just on the side of the mountain there. Of course, that big one over there. Uh, Kind of regret doing that because it takes up a lot of room but it does look cool but i could have had the buildings go back a little bit more had i not done that uh the surface rocks which was the kit that i bought from the uh, hobby shop here are some good examples of where i put them around the layout uh, when i decided to make this little pond here in the park uh, that was a good place. There's one there, and you can see how I just have the grass kind of going up on it. So it just looks like a rocky outcropping that's part of the, the natural landscape. So that's a, a just a good example. Um, here's another one I just put there. Let me pop over to the other side and we'll look at the, uh, the river. Here at the bridge, again, you can see where I did some of the rocks and I decided early on to use the rock as a uh, you know like they cut the the landscape where they were laying the railroad to uh, you know out of natural rock so that was the bridge piers you know just naturally and then of course everything that I did along the river here and I just think it looks really really natural um, looks really good then the small stones are just talus uh, that I bought you know in a in a bag from the hobby shop that there so I really enjoyed working with the rock um, so it's gonna be fun to show you guys how you color them and stuff so we'll get to that uh, in a little bit this is the earth color kit that I bought um, now the Grand Valley layout comes with a few of these colors. It came with raw umber, burnt umber, yellow, black and white, I believe. Um, these were the, the bottles that came with the kit. Uh, but I ended up buying this uh, just to uh, have some more stuff that I could use. Concrete color, stone gray, slate gray. So for this project now, uh, I mixed up, now these you have to mix, so they're, they're concentrate, you put them in something and you mix with 16 parts water or 32 parts water, depending on what you want. Instructions are all pretty clear right on the back here. So uh, I've mixed up for today some gray, yellow, uh, concrete color, white, brown, and black. So we're going to use the leopard spot technique, which they outline in the kit instructions, and uh, we're going to color these. So uh, let's get to it. 
since I've got kind of some small bottles that I mixed them in, um, I was going to use a foam brush like this, but they won't fit in there. So I'm just going to use a regular brush. And we'll start with some yellow ochre here. And we're just going to dab, start dabbing on some of the rocks wherever you see fit. Don't be afraid to let it just run and permeate and you're not actually painting it, you're just sort of doing a wash and let it just go and let it run where it's gonna run. Okay, I did those, uh, let me get this big rock here, do some like this. And this is just the yellow I'm doing right now. Okay. Now I'm just kind of cleaning up my brush a little bit, just putting some color on here and there. All right. Uh, I'm not going to worry too much about cleaning it. I'm just going to wipe it on the paper towel. Now let's do, let's do brown. I think that's burnt umber or something, but so now we'll just go in between and just random kind of going in between where I want stuff. Remember, these are rocks in nature. So we're just being random. If you miss a spot, no big deal. Cool. All right, let's go some gray. Notice how it mixes with the colors that are already on there. Kind of makes its own color, too. See how it just runs down? I'm not taking too much pains with this. All right, so now they're all kind of tiger striped, aren't they? All right, let's do some white. And by the way, I'm gonna need that white when we do the frozen river and pond. Let's let that wash over. By now I'm kind of running out of blank, you know, empty spots where I leopard spotted, but that's good because we're going to do a final wash with our primary color, <laughs> which is going to be the black. You'll see how once I do that, it's going to wake these rocks right up. All right, so this is kind of how they look. Let's do a little more over there. Yeah. 
So kind of pretty much got them all covered now, even if it's with just white or whatever. All right, so that's how they look. So now we are going to take the black and you're gonna see what happens. All right, it's been a few minutes. I just took um, a little bit more gray anywhere that it seemed a little light to me, like if there was too much white. And I just went around the edges with the, the gray color just to make them a little bit darker. That one's got some neat white along there. And after a few minutes, the they start to absorb the color and it starts to dry out. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna let them dry for just a few more minutes. Then we're gonna wash them with the black. And what's gonna happen is the black is gonna seep into the cracks and crevices and sort of wash it all over and make them look really realistic. So let's uh, let them dry a few minutes and then we'll get to that. All right, I mixed up uh, a little bit more black um, since that's our dominant. Um, and so I put it in a bigger container so I can get this sponge in here. So we're just gonna dab it on here literally liberally i should say literally and liberally and we're gonna let it just wash right over the whole thing and you can see how the wash goes in and just picks up the different textures of the rock and the cracks and everything and that's what, to me, that's what brings it to life. I just like doing this. I think this is just so cool. So much fun. I think that's why I have a lot of rocks on the layout, because it's so much fun. <laughs> so, I'm not sure if I'm going to use all these on the winter scene. It seems like an awful lot, but might have something to do on the inside there where I have to do something with the wall uh, in by that tunnel. So... Maybe they'll come in use, I don't know. But uh, yeah, we're just gonna dab these on here like that and then we're gonna let it dry and voila, we've got rocks, colored, natural looking rock. So you can see all the colors in there, how they still come through, but they're just washed over with the black and pretty darn cool, so. Anyway, that's how you cast rocks and paint them, color them. So, hope you enjoyed that. So, here's how they came out after the black wash. And uh, just a note, I took a little rag and just wiped off wherever it looked like it was a little heavy. And what's cool about that is it exposes a little bit of the white underneath. So, it just gives it a little weathered look. But, uh, got it kind of just drying in the sun here. So here's how they came out. I think they look awesome. And they're right in line with all the other rocks around the region. So they're not completely weird, uh, you know, different colors. So they're not like from this region. So there's another one. I didn't even see that one before. That one's just kind of stuck there. But uh, so yeah, they came out good. So uh, we'll uh, get those laid out where they make sense. And take it over here and fit it in see how it looks so we want it to fit in fairly easily but yet you know we're gonna have people and things on it so that fits in there pretty good i kind of made it go a little further up that way and a little further back so uh Let's take it back over to the bench and I'll show you what I've got planned as far as laying it out. So obviously train comes along here. I'm thinking a pond here, frozen pond, a little stream that will kind of meander in here, feed the pond and then come back out over here somewhere. In this corner, I'm going to build it up with a little bit of wadded up paper and some plaster cloth. And we'll have just a little hill right here. Not very big, 
because we want to be able to get it into the opening. So there'll be an opening, or I mean a, uh, a hill here, pond here. Uh, the kids will be ice skating on the pond. And then over here, either here or on this side, there'll be the snowball fight across the stream. And that's kind of what I'm thinking. The rest of it, we're just going to play it by ear, see how it comes out. It'll be covered with snow. Um, not sure how I'm going to do the frozen pond. I know the Woodland Scenics uh, website says to trace out your streams and your pond with a bead of glue. That'll keep the realistic water uh, in. So I've got just enough left for that. I got about, uh, you can kind of see it in there. So that'll do for that. And then I'm also going to be making some icicles and stuff with the water effects. And I'll be showing you how I do that. Uh, so that's where we're going to leave it this week. So that's it for part one. And uh, tune in next week. Hopefully we'll get some more done. And uh, be able to show you a little bit more as we get towards Christmas. We'll be set with that uh, winter scene on the backside of the mountains. So... All right. Thank you, everybody, for watching and uh, subscribing. We're up to 206 subscribers as of this uh, weekend, Sunday morning, which is totally awesome. So I thank you so much for that. Thanks for sharing and liking and doing all the stuff you guys do and the comments. Uh, keep them coming. Anything you want to see uh, or like me to explain, let me know in comments. Thank you so much, and we will see you next update.